and let's take a look at the stuff that you can do to make the game run just a little bit better um, and we'll kind of see the fruits of our labor um, as we go through this so let's take a look at it now one of the first things that you want to do when you get Elden Ring going is you actually want to basically right click on the game you want to go manage you want to go browse local files and what you'll do when you're in this menu here uh, you want to click onto the game itself and you actually want to do the following you want to rename start protected game to whatever um, you can also just move this file somewhere else if you so wish and then what you want to do at that point forward is you basically want to rename Elden Ring EXE to start protected game dash 222 whatever this will basically get rid of anti-cheat the easy anti-cheat program that runs in the background as it is something that actually does rob you of some frames so especially if you're on slower hardware um, this is something that could help you but keep in mind that if you do end up going this route you will actually end up not being able to use any online features um, and I believe that you do have to sign into the game first the first time around when you go into it uh, before you can do this otherwise sometimes it can kind of glitch out but that's one of the things that you want to take a look at make sure that you get this going um, the other part here that you want to do is actually go into the Windows graphics settings again if you're on Windows 10 you want to go in here you want to make sure that you find Elden Ring somewhere in here so you're going to look for again the game you're going to find it so you're going to add it into this list and what you'll want to do is you want to set the game into high performance that way again you're getting kind of the maximum um, out of the game within the Windows settings as it stands uh, the other part that not too many people actually know about is um, if you go into Windows Defender and specifically you you know look for Windows Defender you look for app and browser control settings you want to click on that and again uh, kind of you want to go into the section that will allow you to add the game into this uh, basically what you look for is the exploit protection section you want to go into here and you can set this globally although I don't recommend it for security reasons I'm not going to go into details of what CFG does but in essence um, this is something that's a security feature that has been introduced in Windows a couple of patches back and unfortunately what ends up happening is on a lot of the DX12 games uh, basically when this is enabled or on by default as you can see in here it actually will create some hitching and cause some slowdowns I don't know if it's also related to the kind of processor um, you know settings for different processors Intel or AMD etc um, as far as the various features that they support or feature sets etc but the point is you go into the program settings in here and I basically click to add the program and what I like to do is I like to choose the exact path so you click on this and then basically you know you copy the Elden Ring path into this area select the game um, in our case you would actually be basically selecting the one that says start protected game you click open and then basically from in here what you'll see once you add it this way and I'm just gonna click into a different one in here you're going to scroll down and you're gonna look for the section that says CFG you're gonna click on the override button and you're gonna select it to toggle off and then you can hit apply down at the bottom here make sure you do hit apply after it's been toggled to off and then you can basically close out of this menu and again this will give you just a few extra frames um, back in your game the other part here is we're gonna look at the Windows power settings as well it's gonna be another really important one uh, specifically we're gonna go into power sleep settings I'm gonna go into additional power settings in here and again um, this is one that may or may not work for you depending on the CPU that you use but what you actually want to do is you want to set it to the balance setting um, in here versus you know if it's for you like stuck on bitsum or Ryzen high performance in my case being on the Ryzen processor but from everything that I've heard setting yourself to the balanced power plan is kind of the way that you want to go about this this allows you to basically get um, just a little bit more performance out of the game this way and then last but not least you want to go into your Nvidia control panel um, basically for you Nvidia guys for AMD I'm not sure if uh, quite the same settings actually apply as they do uh, basically on you know basically on the AMD cards uh, with the same way now what we're actually gonna be looking for in here if we keep scrolling down you want to select the shader cache size and you want to set it to unlimited uh, this basically allows the game to cache as much shaders as quickly as possible and to allow you to basically not have as much load in um, of the shaders and not have them compile as much during real time as you otherwise would again this is going to be kind of a big one um, especially for those of you on slower hardware 
because it seems like at this point in time, most of the issues are with the shaders not being pre-cached. So meaning every time a new effect uh, comes into play, you see a new enemy, etc. all those shaders have to be loaded in in real time. And that causes those weird kind of hitches and slowdowns within the game itself. So again, make sure you set that shader cache size to unlimited and you will see um, sort of the performance that we get out of this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch into the game after we've gotten all this stuff out of the way. So anyhow, you guys, here we are now finally in game. As you can see, there are still dips that will happen now and again. Unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot that we can do about this currently. I am randomly getting anywhere between 45 to 60 uh, frames per second as this is, you know, kind of running. Now, uh, there is a program called Flawless Widescreen that supposedly unlocks this frame rate, and I've seen people utilize that to a certain extent. Um, personally, I have found it to be rather glitchy, and it doesn't always seem to unlock the frame rate as much as I would like. Um, and oftentimes, I'm kind of forced to use it in conjunction with Rivatuner just to kind of still cap the frame rate to something like 120, for example. Uh, but realistically, the game never even reaches those numbers um, on my setup for one reason or another. And since I don't have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, I can't really fully take advantage of that anyhow. Uh, however, with that said, after running all of these tweaks, I have found that the experience is still a lot more fluid. You can see that it's definitely dropping frames and it's really inconsistent, but by and large, the way that you fix most of these problems right now is by simply playing and kind of going into as many of the areas as you can around the map as quickly as you can, uh, ideally by just using fast travel. That way, when you do come across an area that, for example, you you know, haven't necessarily visited earlier as you're going about your playthrough, you will actually be able to basically get a decent amount of performance out of the game. Now, that's not to say that patches aren't coming, because they are. However, I have found that so far, at least with these fixes, it makes the game a lot more tenable for me personally. Now, I'm not saying that I am somebody who is, you know, able to fully take advantage of something like this, um, because again, my, um, you know, my kind of hardware it should be able to play the game at much better frame rates than this, and hopefully a patch will be coming at some point uh, down the road that will improve things quite a fair amount, but this is where we are right now. So hopefully uh, the video helps you guys out, hopefully you're able to gleam something from this. Um, if you're somebody who is also on Windows 7, uh, 8.1, or on Linux, there is also a basically Proton layer that will allow you to run this game um, now some people have shown ways that you can get this done basically using some async compute uh, code that allows you to run the game a little bit better in addition to the Proton layer um, again allowing you to essentially run this on non-native um, DX12 cards so mostly that's for ATI at this point or AMD if you will uh, they do run in NVIDIA to a certain extent but with that said your mileage will vary However, it does mean that Elden Ring is now actually also Linux playable, although I've heard really mixed reports about the frame rates there. As you can see, they're not exactly great on Windows either, so you know I can't guarantee that you're going to be getting great frame rates there because, again, it is still a translation layer, uh, which means it will be living on top of what normally exists. Uh, normally, it would be Vulkan, of course, and because this will be translating DX12 to Vulkan, there is going to be some additional kind of latency involved in that. Now, I don't know how bad it is. I haven't tested it on Linux myself, so I can't really give you guys good numbers as far as what the input latency is like. If you guys have any kind of notes that you want me to put in for sort of a next version of this video, or if you are somebody who is just in general kind of uh, interested in providing some feedback on this kind of stuff, I'd be great, you know, really glad to hear it, actually. It'd be a fantastic to get a sort of community kind of level um, going for this sort of thing so that we can kind of just fix the game essentially as a community of people that enjoy it, that enjoy uh, this sort of gameplay, enjoy this type of game. Of course, uh, still waiting on From Software to complete a couple of things, but with that said, you know, everything kind of uh, will come in due course, I hope, and uh, we'll be able to get this resolved. So until next time, it's been Crazy Welder.